In the last video, we saw how we can extract data from the Yahoo Finance with the help of Pandas Data Reader module. Another online database that is gaining popularity is Quandle. Let's see how we can import data from that source. To do that, first we need to install the Quandle module by using the following code. pip install Quandle. Then we can use the get function to download the data, let's say for GDP, by executing the following code. Once the data is loaded, we can view the data by using head or tail functions or by simply typing the name of the dataset, GDP. Seems like this data is available for a period beginning in 1947. Let's say if we would like to save this data on our local computer, we can do so by using the following code. Name of the data, GDP.2 underscore CSV and in parentheses write R and within quotes indicate the directory where you would like to store the file including the name of the file, let's call it new.csv. Once we execute these codes, the data should be saved in the specified folder. We can verify this by checking what we have in that folder. We see that new.csv has been saved in our folder. The process for downloading the data in Excel format is similar to the one for CSV. Instead of dot two underscore CSV, we need to use dot two underscore Excel and make sure to change the file extension to either XLS or XLSX. Now let's see how we can import the data stored on our computer directly into Python. I have saved a data file called queens2bad.csv in a folder on my computer. The .csv or comma separated values is most widely used file formats in the financial data analysis. We will use the read data module from pandas to import this CSV file into Python. But before that, let's first import few libraries. Import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, import matplotlib as mlp, and from scipy import stats. Now to import data, type the following code. Let's call our data as queens underscore two underscore beds. This is the location of the data on my computer. Now that data is loaded on Python, let's see how it looks like. Recall we can use head or tail functions to view the first or the last five rows of the data or we can directly type the name of the data to view the complete dataset. Python creates a new index column with counters 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on by default. But if we want the rental ID as the index column, we can do so by using the following code. Let's see if this works. Absolutely. We can also achieve this by modifying the code to import the data as follows. Let's execute this cell and see if this code correctly assigns first column or rental ID as the index variable. Perfect. Now let's use this data to calculate the mean, median and modal rental in Queens. Since we are only interested in the rents, we can separate the rent variable in a new dataset and call it rents. To do that, execute the following code. Recall, we can use the average and the median functions from NumPy to calculate the mean and the median and can use the stats.mode function from SciPy to calculate the mode. We can save these measures of central tendency in three new variables as follows. Finally, we can print the results using the following lines of code. We have just concluded a set of Python lectures that introduce the process of working with online and offline data. Thank you for watching.